Praise the Lord, everybody. Uh, this is an awesome, awesome experience. These are members of Eastern Star Church from uh, one of our three locations, and we appreciate Reverend Nicole Barnes for pulling us together and hopefully to encourage people to get registered to vote and to vote. And as I uh, say all the time, get a plan for how you're going to vote. Get you a plan. My plan is always to be the first person on the first day of early voting. And uh, and I get there early in the morning, me and this old white lady, we show up. <laughs> she tries to beat me, I try to beat her over there every year. And that's my plan. And so you gotta get a plan. There are those who try to suppress our vote. So we're here to, uh, to help encourage you to get out uh, and vote. So I'm gonna open this up in prayer and Reverend Nicole Barnes is gonna kind of lead us in our discussion on tonight. And I wanna thank all the members of Eastern Star Church, who are here tonight, thank you for sacrificing to come and hopefully exhort somebody to do what we need to do to make the right decisions. We, we at Eastern Star Church, we never tell people who to vote for. We just encourage you to go and vote intelligently. Do your homework and then go and vote for those who are going to be inclusive in terms of our community. So let's pray. Father, thank you for your love, your mercy, your grace. Thank you for the word of God. Uh, that helps us to understand that um, you've, in, you've endorsed uh, this issue with, with politicians, with heads of state, with those who make policies. And so, God, we put all this in your hands and we pray in this coming election that the people that you want in place will be in place. We want you to be in your will. And so, God, uh, tonight we ask you to just be a part of our conversation and I pray that each of us will be encouraged and be encouraging. And Father, I'm just believing that victory is going to come as us coming together tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Um, it's essential because we have this right today that we earned, that someone fought for us to have. Um, we have to remember that. Uh, sometimes I think we forget because we have these privileges and we have these rights that we forgot. There was a time in history that we did not have that. Mm -hmm. um, so it's important for us to continue to fight to keep it, to protect it, um, so we can pass that on for generations to come so they can continue to keep those rights. Um, because uh, right now, uh, there are individuals that are trying to take those rights away from us. Um, also, too, we we can't add to the numbers. We can't add to the data, right? We're, we're showing them the case why, you know, um, why they could take it away. They say, well, you don't use it, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so, again, I think it's just important now more than ever that we do that, and it's essential um, that we protect the rights that someone fought for us to have. Well, I've always, like in my academic career, um, history, social studies has always been my favorite subject. Any history, local history, national history, just learning the things that have happened up to this point, the things that have influenced where we are at this point. So even though I know now for my generation where we live in the world, it's very concrete and tangible and people want to see this and people want to touch this to actually realize how important it is, even not having been able to vote in the past or even in this upcoming election, I realized that even though I can't touch it, even though I can't see it, the right to vote is just so important because if one person realizes that their right to vote is important and chooses to act on that right, there are 8 billion people in the world now. You can make a difference with that. Wow. Yeah. 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 Voting is just a powerful tool. It's so powerful. And so many people are so disenfranchised and, and they don't use that tool. And it's a, we have a social responsibility as well as morally. We should be voting. And um, I, I just don't want to lose track of the fact that so many people have gone before us who have fought and died and worked hard and and now it just appears sometimes that it's just frivolous that oh it's just i'm not gonna vote so for me it's essential and i try to get out and talk to people about voting try to encourage them and inspire them because again it is a powerful tool it shapes a lot of what we want to do as we move forward in our community. Yeah, and, and let me jump in here, too. And I agree with Courtney because uh, when we understand our history, we can walk into our destiny. When you don't know where you come from, you don't know where you're going. And just the, the sacrifices that have been made for us to even get to this, to this point. I was on another panel 
and I was talking about my grandmother that was born in 1922, and I told them my grandmother was born before the Voting Rights Act. And so she lived all those years, and she didn't have an opportunity to vote, and she never missed voting, mm -hmm. ever, once 1965 came around. Then it dawned on me, I was born before we had the right to vote. So that shows you how close it is in us understanding our history and making sure that we do what we need to do. Uh, I'm, I'm not trying to pay taxes and then don't have a voice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you, I'm gonna pay taxes and then somebody else will <laughs> determine where it goes. So that vote is my voice to be a part of the process. And I just wanna encourage everybody to make sure you do what you need to do, understanding what people before us did to get us to this point. Mm -hmm. When you really think about uh, <clears throat> voting and uh, the impact that it has, it impacts your streets, your sidewalks, your education, your your, your safety. Uh, it, it, it impacts so much. And so to say that you don't want to vote says a lot about uh, what you represent. And I think uh, voting can have a, 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 a powerful way of saying who represents you and who hears your issues and who's going to stand up for you. So you've got to vote. Mm -hmm. No vote, no voice. When you have a house and you lock your door, it's because you know somebody walk in your house and if they could be something they could take that's a value. Mm -hmm. You know, you only make it difficult to access things that have value. Mm -hmm. And so when the, the system makes it difficult for certain people to do certain things, it's because they know if they got access to it, it'd be something of value. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, now we got critical thinkers at Eastern Star Church. Mm -hmm. So y'all put two and two together, you know, but the system knows when a group of people who have been silenced, put on mute, have an opportunity to be heard. That's a powerful situation. Yes. And so when I think about the suppression, not as of our, our votes, but of our agency as a people. Because mm -hmm. in law school they said every legal decision is a financial decision. That's what yes. Pastor Johnson was just talking about. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like, you, you pay your taxes, but you're not going to go vote. Yeah. As if you can choose one, not the other. Yes. That ain't how I get down. Yeah. And, and so what I say is the, the suppression of, of black people's vote is the suppression of black people's value. Mm. And so when you choose not to vote, you are aiding mm. in the reduction of our value. Mm. And I refuse to be a part of a narrative mm. that says I'm not valuable. Because we the Genesis and the Revelation. Come on. It was black people in both books. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come on. I think gun control. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that means, but there has to be something. And I, I was talking to Patrick actually on my way here, and we were talking about how when uh, whatever that the ban that was lifted, mm -hmm. how we just heard so just of so many more deaths and shootings. And I'm like, are we just are we just supposed to kill each other? You know, and it seems like that's okay in the black community. And it's not okay in the black community. Right. It's not okay in any community. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the big things that has stood out um, in, my, um, in my eyes. I was also thinking as high as like the Supreme Court, when, when votes are suppressed, then we, I, I don't know what this really means as far as the Supreme Court, but I was thinking about how um, Trump was able to have all people like him that thought like him or he thought thought like mm -hmm. him right. as Supreme Court uh, justices and just us getting ready to get, being able to have a voice it allows our leader and you know and uh, and I'm voting for uh, Kamala Harris but when it allows our leader to make a make some decisions at that top level and we don't vote then we won't have the leader that will speak on behalf of all people. So we, we definitely want to vote for national, state, local. local. Mm -hmm. But when you talk about president, that they get in and start putting judges they in places, mm -hmm. just the influence that they have. So it's not just this one person. It is the, the influence that they have at a national and international level. Mm -hmm. And then for us to sit back and say, I'm not, I'm not going to help determine who that is. Mm -hmm. That makes no sense to me. So uh, you're exactly right about that. We need to make sure we get to the polls. Mm -hmm. To quickly piggyback off what Pastor Johnson was saying, 
they're not particular issues for me, but more of concepts, like three things that I think are really important to me looking at any candidate, because I watch all the debates and I do my research. <laughs> be, are they making outlandish promises? <clears throat> are they willing to admit that there will be pros and cons to any policy they want to implement and who's on their team? Because one thing I think people don't really pay attention to, like Pastor Johnson was saying, is that when you elect somebody, you're not electing that one person. You're electing the people who stand for what they stand for. Gun violence. Unfortunately, Indiana is 17th in the nation for gun violence, right? So we're, we're in the top 20 for something like that. We're 50th for voter turnout. Um, so on a, on a larger level, for me, it's systemic issues, yeah. right? And so if we address the systemic issues, and, and create systemic change, everything else follows, mm -hmm. right? Um, right now, we're just at risk as a country, as a nation, of repeating history in the wrong way. Wow. Um, mm -hmm. And so that is concerning. I mean, it should be concerning to every one of us, right? Um, so we can avoid that, so we can continue to progress forward mm -hmm. and not, um, again, roll backwards and be stagnant. Um, we have individuals that, that are trying to do that in this country. Um, and so we have to make sure that we do our research and we vote for those um, that, that do represent um, forward motion, right? Not rolling us backward um, and progression, um, safety, right? Education, healthcare, all these things. But systemic, systemic change is needed. Um, and um, until we, we focus at the roots of all issues, I mean, the, the problems and issues are going to continue to come. Mm -hmm. so, and yeah. talk about the power of our vote. You know, in, in, in Indianapolis area is about 30% African American. So one in eight of us represent this mm -hmm. central Indiana, mm -hmm. Indiana, Indiana area. And the power of that and the, and, and the impact that it can actually make a difference in the election. I mean, we can actually set the tone mm -hmm. of what happens in this state and if the country for that matter, because the, the, that's, a, that's a strong voting number block mm -hmm. if we get out and vote. Definitely um, women's rights mm -hmm. to decide what we do with our bodies. Mm -hmm. That is huge, huge, um, especially for uh, the coming generations. I, I, I'm very confused as to why that's even an issue. Mm -hmm. um, but those are two things that are very, very important to me. And then also education. It's very important that we think about the kids that are coming up and what they actually are going to have to in, endure and deal with and make sure that they have what they need in order to make informed decisions. Uh, housing, healthcare, um, violence, um, and I do find it very interesting, and, and we talked about this at one point before, that the black vote is so suppressed. Mm -hmm. And we only make up about maybe 12% of the population. Mm -hmm. So there has to be some reason, going back to what you said about value, there has to be some reason why our vote has to be so suppressed. Because what are these 11, 12% of the people going to do? If they rise up and they vote and they say something, their God will be behind them. So we have to be very, very careful <laughs> to make sure that we vote. Because all these issues that we have, gun violence, the housing, all that good stuff, um, we actually have the voice on that. We have the power on that, and so we need to make our voice heard. Mm -hmm. Right. To add to that, I would say youth empowerment, mm -hmm. because it's because of them that they, if they participate in the process, that will help to shape our future. Mm -hmm. And seeing that we have powerful people like yourself and, and Murdoch Jr. here, <laughs> I mean, it just really helps to, you know, help us to know that our future can be in great hands if we give them the empowerment to do what they need to do. Mm -hmm. oh, that's great. Yes. You know, we, the Department of Defense has a budget that we don't even know. We know a portion of it, mm -hmm. but then there's a budget that based off of the security of our country, it's billions and billions of dollars. Right. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to Social Security, mm -hmm. Medicaid, and, and Medicare, they always want to pinch and grab and take. And people have worked hard for that their whole life. And as you get older, you can't defend a lot of that. You know, as people age, they don't have the energy to fight that fight. Yeah. So we have to fight that for, you know, older people. Yes. So that's, you know, along with all the other uh, things we talked about, that's that's my concern, our entitlement program and, and how, how that works. Oftentimes when people say it's selfish of you to keep your vote, my vote don't matter, but why would they be working so hard to suppress right. it, right? <laughs> and then hearing the conversations to say, it ain't just about you. 
Like, do you realize other people that this affects? Do you understand how that affects the people down the street from you, your grandparents, your great, right? So I think the education piece, it's easy for the people to look at how ravaged our communities are, but when you say, but you can do something about it, my vote don't count, right? So I think um, educating them, and most of the people watching this are probably people that are going to be voting, but I think empowering them even to say, but go have those other conversations across the generations yeah. and talk to the others to help sure, uh, help make sure they know it ain't just about you. There are yeah. other people that are depending on you to vote with them. So I enjoy, I love going to vote. It is so awesome to me. I love my little sticker. Yes. As soon as I vote, I put my sticker on. I want to make sure everybody knew that I vote. I wear it all day long. So it is just a joy for me to be able to go in there and actually be able to um, voice my opinion, what yeah. I think. And it is also important for me to know who I'm voting for. Yeah. Uh, doesn't matter. Democrat, Republican, I need to vote for the right person. That's right. Um, Pastor Johnson has said a number of times, you know, people show you who they are. Mm -hmm. You know, he hit, he tells you, you know, notice what they actually have done in the past. They'll tell you what they're going to do in the future. Right. Right. So you got to pay attention to that. Yeah. I used to go into uh, voter booth with my grandpa when I was really little, and every time we would get a sticker he would give me a sticker too, even though obviously I wasn't voting. Yeah. So when I turn eighteen, I will be at every primary, representative, senate, presidential election, and get my sticker. <laughs> That's right. My mother used to start, my mother used to uh, work in the at the polls, and she worked every year, and it was so inspiring to us. And I remember when I turned 18 and I could vote. She's like, you know, just go in there. And she said, you just pick Democrat and you vote straight. <laughs> <laughs> so I went in there. I was all afraid. I didn't know what to do. So I was like, Democrat, straight. <laughs> well, of course, I learned over time. You know, you started looking at the histories of people sure. and all of that. But but it was something about her doing that. Yeah. That when you asked me to assist, and I, then I signed up after that, um, the, the, the panel that you all mm -hmm. had mm -hmm. here in Maine, I, saw, I just felt my mother's spirit mm -hmm. all over everything, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think about how she did this faithfully, voted and um, yeah. worked and voted and worked. And she was so, just so ill mo most of her life. But, um, but I think about that and I think about today, and I and I think the Voting Act was 1965, and that was the year I was born. I was like, so just so much plays into that. But I think about what I why I brought that up is I think about when President Barack Obama became president, she had already passed, mm -hmm. and so all of those years she never saw mm -hmm. that day, and so. I think that's another part of the history that we have to work on with our young people. Yes. That sometimes you'll be voting for things and for people and for causes and justice and all that, and you may never see the yeah. fruit of it. Sure. But keep doing it because yeah. it's going to yeah. show yes. one day. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. The joy, um, as I reflect on those that have moved on uh, before me, um, my father, who's not here today to see me run, um, mm -hmm. But yet I know that I grew up in a household, like, you know, Joshua was at 24 and 15. That's for me and my house, right? But Amen. we not only just served the Lord, we prayed, but we voted. Mm -hmm. I mean, me growing up, going to the polling sites with my parents as a, as a little girl. Mm -hmm. I mean, I knew I was there with them. I couldn't vote, but I knew that's what you're supposed to do, mm -hmm. right? Um, same thing for as I as I became an adult and had a, had a daughter. She know she, she, she came everywhere with me, mm -hmm. right? She's registered to vote. She's ready, mm -hmm. right? Um, it's just important that, so the joy is knowing that those before me, as I go in there, I'm representing them because their spirit continues to live within me. Um, just two weeks ago, we celebrated my grandfather's 95th birthday, um, you know, born in 1929. So the fact that he talks about it, I mean, he's in his right mind, like standing up, walking, right? He's not, right? And he talks about I mean, just imagine 1929 to now 2024. Yeah. Yeah. That's right? Yeah. Um, and what he said to me was when I when I picked up the phone and called my grandparents and said I'm running, um, and he says, now just gives me another uh, reason to live a year longer. Mm. Wow. 
So, you know what I'm saying? This yeah. is for yeah. him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is for Rowley, who's not of yes. age to vote yeah. today yeah. or on November 5th. Yeah. But this is for every rally that cannot yeah. vote right now. Yeah. Like the joy, right? Because yeah. your voice is for them, too. Absolutely. So I remember my mom getting up at the weeest of hours of the morning mm. to go work the polls. And... At the time, I'd be like, well, where is she going right about now? You know, mm -hmm. but every year, every election, whether it was local, whether it was national, she was out there. And that was mm -hmm. such a testament to where we come from as a people. Just the fact that my mother was like, no, I want to make sure to to be out here to work mm -hmm. the polls um, no matter what, as long as it was. And I understand that I'm from Gary. And so in Gary, Lake County, I think is one of the last counties to come in with the. <laughs> so she was literally out there all the time. And so when I was able to vote, I was so excited to do so. I was 18, I was a student at Butler University, and I'm like, okay, where do we go to vote? Like, where? Because I remember my mother had a specific place that she would go to, and so I really did appreciate um, being able to take part in that same process that she would work all the time. Um, and then there is this joy, just like you say, about um, being able to vote and put per people in office, and that gives you that voice. Um, so I really could say, well, I voted for this person. I have some questions for you. <laughs> so that's the joy of it that I actually have literally I have the the power to say hey I got some questions for you I have some I need you to address some certain things um, and that person should be listening right so um, so that's the joy for me just the fact that where I'm coming from um, seeing my mom make sure to take part in that in that um, election process and then me being able to to vote as well my parents both grew up on a plantation in Mississippi and worked for yes and to see that they left Mississippi, and my dad was the oldest of 13, so, and my mom was an only child. Imagine that. Wow. So, most of my father's family went to Chicago, and he came to Fort Wayne, Indiana, mm -hmm. of which I was born and raised. Mm -hmm. And to know that what they went through and could not vote, and the same as you said with your grandmother, my parents had a third and fifth grade education. And they instilled in us, they wanted us to do better. And so we've carried that. So fast forward and to know that I have the ability to not just vote myself, but to encourage others to vote. Because as we all have said, no vote, no voice. And in order for it to be heard, even as we talk now, as Pastor Johnson said, vote early mm -hmm. so you know your vote will be counted because That's you don't right. know what's going to happen That's in right. those yeah. days. Yeah. So as soon as that opportunity arises, we need to take advantage of it. That's right. So that's the joy for me to know that so many others, including my own family members, couldn't have the privilege for so many years. And then finally, we have it and the joy of being able to make a difference yeah. in, in using my vote yes. to do so. The joy... You know, I like to win. Mm. So I'm a competitor. You hear me? So I don't do anything. If they don't mean I'm going to win. Period. <laughs> and, and everybody play a role on a winning team. Mm -hmm. Like I love basketball. Mm -hmm. I'm saying everybody not going to be the star. Mm -hmm. But if the sixth person mm -hmm. or the 12th person or the shooting coach or the assistant coach or the head coach do their job, guess what we going to do? We, we well, No, if they we don't. don't. If they yeah. don't do their job, we're going to freaking lose. Yeah. Yeah. We're yeah. going to lose. Yeah. Yeah. That's and, right. and I don't like to lose. Yeah. And and for our community, we can't afford to lose. Yeah. So we got to learn how to win. Mm, that's good. Now, now, the thing about winning, though, anybody who ever played something before, winning is tough. Mm -hmm. You got to wake up early to go win. Sometimes you go to sleep late yeah. to go win. Mm -hmm. And it's wild what we'll wake up early and go to sleep for it. <laughs> <laughs> we will do some things we may not enjoy yeah. to experience joy. Because yeah. right. joy and happiness ain't the same thing. Happiness right. is happiness. It's going to come, and what's it going to do? Yeah. That joint going to go. Yeah. But but that beauty of that joy is it, it lasts. Yeah. And and I, I, I can personally not afford to continue to be associated with loss. Because mm. losing in our context has different consequences. Mm, that's right. yes. that's right. So, you know, the joy for me that comes in voting is knowing I'm be a part of a winning team. Because mm -hmm. you ain't going to tell me five years from now or 10 years from now that I missed my opportunity to be a part of some revolutionary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To vote mm -hmm. for somebody that ain't never sat in that seat before. You hear me? Mm -hmm. And the, the last thing I'm going to say, too, is you right, there's a narrative that the black vote is being suppressed. And that is true. Is. They create so many obstacles to us getting to the polls. 
But I'm going to tell you something. Since the first time I could vote, I voted mm -hmm. in every election. And you know how long I ever waited to go and vote? Mm -hmm. Five minutes, mm -hmm. maybe. So I'm going to destigmatize what it even means to go to the polls. Yeah. They're going to make you think it's hard to get that job so that you don't interview. Mm -hmm. They're going to make you think That's right. it's hard to believe in yourself so you never do. Yeah. Right. They're going to make you think it ain't a polling location two minutes from your house right. that you can drive to that no one's going to slide to. Yeah. Nobody's going to be there. <laughs> and you finna be the only one there with 12 people 30 years older than you saying, honey, how can I help? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, I think that's, that's awesome. <laughs> you ain't finna have no experience <laughs> at that polling location <laughs> in our county. You hear me? Because of people like yourself. You're not going to have that experience. You're going to walk in the door, and nine times out of ten, you're going to see somebody that wants you to cast that ballot. Yeah. That probably look like people sitting here. Yeah. I don't know if I ever voted and had to cat give my ballot to a white person when I did it. Mm -hmm. right. It was always an older black lady mm -hmm. who took my vote and said, baby, and she gave me my sticker. So I'm going to keep wearing my sticker. <laughs> <laughs> That's my joy. That's yes, my joy. <laughs> No, no, you just show up, you knock on doors, you hand out envelopes, you get calls, you go to phone banks, but you help a team. Come on, brother. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a part of the team. Come on, right here, man. And so that's where I get my joy from because I get a chance, you know, to go and help and serve. And um, I'm going to go back a little bit. Um, so some years ago, I used to live in Lake County. And my then father-in-law was the Democratic chairman of the Democratic Party for all of Lake County. Mm -hmm. And so that's when Evan Byer was running for office. Mm -hmm. And I got exposed to a whole lot. Mm -hmm. And so that stuck with me, that process. Mm -hmm. And when I got opportunity to move back home, I just, I've never missed a vote. I've never missed any of that. Um, <laughs> for me, um, I, I, I think about my mother, my beautiful black mother from rural Mississippi. Uh, oh, yeah. We met a white guy from Western Kentucky who was on a gas station and had me. But when, when she got pregnant, he ran. He had nothing to do with her. So my mother mm -hmm. raised me by herself. And my mother powered me two different ways. Uh, one, she, she made sure I knew, got a personal relationship with Jesus. So that's that, that she poured that into mm -hmm. me. Secondly, she, she, she empowered me a lot of different ways. She talked about the power of voting and where she come from, from rural Mississippi. And so I never forgot that. As soon as I came home from the Navy, Pastor Johnson, I went and voted. And it was my first time voting. I've never missed a vote ever in my life. I voted every, 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 every single election all my life as I was 18 years old. And I, uh, I feel like when I go in there and vote, I'm empowered. Yes. And I know my vote matters because there's some people trying to get your vote. And you, you, you're, it's, like you said, you could be the only person going to vote, but some candidates out there saying, you vote for me, please. Here's my literature. They, they, they want on, you to vote for them. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the elections are won by the slimmest margin. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to encourage you. Listen, I'll be out there pushing. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to encourage you. They're won by the <laughs> slimmest margin. Yeah. And knocking on someone's door and personally meeting them goes a long way. Yeah. And so uh, I tell you that uh, this election is very important to our democracy. Okay. It's really important to uh, the, the truth. The truth of our mm. country mm -hmm. around um, us. Um, so thank y'all so much. Vote early. Yes, yes right. right. Everybody vote early. Yes, do right. your research. Yeah. You can go to Ballotpedia Come on. and do yeah. your research. When you scroll in social media, you can also look up and see what these candidates are liking. What's some of the stuff they reposting? Mm -hmm. What's some of the stuff that they... Y'all, we can do our research. Mm -hmm. So it's important for us to see who we are voting for. Mm -hmm. In the state of Indiana, we have the governor. We have our own state judges, yes. Supreme mm -hmm. Court, yes. mm -hmm. that are up for election. We need to know who's making the decisions. Because as the federal government gives more power to the state-level government mm -hmm. to make decisions, mm -hmm. we need to make sure that those people have our best interests right. at heart, right. yeah. okay? Yeah. So make sure that we know who is on the ballot, know who we are voting for. And I cannot stress enough what you just said. I oversee elections all over this country. Mm. I've watched margins of two people. Mm -hmm. Two people mm. determine who gets the keys and the power to make decisions in a community. That's right. Mm -hmm. So it's important for us 
to make sure that we show up early and often. Riley, thank you so much for Amen. your voice. Thank you. Thank each and every one of you. Um, Pastor Johnson, closing remarks. Too many people have gone before us for us not to do handle our business. Um, they paved this way for us to get here, mm -hmm. and hopefully we're paving the way for Riley and others. Mm -hmm. But uh, make sure you get to the polls. Let me, like uh, Reverend Nicole Barnes was saying, let me thank all of you for your participation and your your engagement in what you do. It, it makes a big, big difference. And you never know who you're touching and helping and blessing and the difference that you're, that you're making. Uh, let me close this out in prayer. Yes, yes. Father, thank you for our time together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your mercy, your grace. Yes, yes. Thank you for the scriptures yes. to help us to understand I'm speaking truth to power. Yes. yes. And God, I lift up this election and everybody that's running for office. Thank you, Jesus. And I pray that the right people will get in the right spaces at the yes, right time. I lift up Katrina Owens. Name and Ron Gibson yes, and others, Father, who know that some of this insanity comes with the territory. Yes. And I pray that you'll give them the wisdom that they need to operate in the offices that you give them. Yes. God, let your will be done in this coming election. Yes, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.